wrong. And as a judge, so you judge uh, several shows. Mm -hmm. uh, what was the process in trying to become a judge? Well, first, uh, when I got uh, my judging for GBO, it was a certification. Okay. You know, so it was a class that we had to take. Um, they would, uh, there was a questionnaire that we had to fill out. Um, so they greeted us on that. And then they greeted us on uh, live shows that they recorded. And basically, you know, um, cut it off before, I guess, they lined up everybody to who, who was first, second, third, or whatever. Okay. They just had them, you know, there. And then based on that, where did we, we put them? And I passed. You have to think I get it, I think at least an 85% or something okay. like that. And I passed, so I started judging with them. Um, I judged with them for a year, and then Naturally Fit, that's when they broke off with WNDL, yeah, yeah. and they decided to keep their own uh, organization started. Uh, that's when Dave Nall used to still be the head of Naturally Fit, because uh, now it's uh, Larry, I uh, forgot his name. Larry something. Um, but anyways, um, I judged would naturally fit after that for a good, like I said, five years. But also, did they have some type of certification or no. class? Not for, I guess not for me since I was already experienced. Okay. You know, I'm not sure if they do that for others. Uh, actually, they do. They, you have to test judge. So they would have the judges in the front. So we would be directly in the front and the people on the sides would be the test judge people. So they would be test judging like, I'm not too sure if they had a questionnaire, but that's what they basically do. And that's basically the same thing that we do for my show. We're going to have a couple people okay. test judging. So let me give you a hot, hot, hot question uh, as a competitor. Because most people think there's things going on within the judges. Okay. You know? Is there? Has there been? Well, I have mean, have you seen stuff? Have I First seen stuff? stuff? <laughs> well, I mean, see, me as a judge, I never, I, I work too hard to become a judge to allow someone to ruin that for me. Now, I'm not going to lie, I've got emails from males and females sending me like crazy pictures that they shouldn't be sending me. And I'm like, okay, that's great, but you can send me your, your shots in a covered bikini covered bottoms like we're not judging all that you know so i've had competitors try to woo me as a judge before the show after yeah. the show before the show. the show yeah before the show they know i'm judging which they try not to let people know who's judging but people somehow find out or whatever but i've gotten some emails from competitors trying salacious wow. pictures yes salacious or flirting for males and females both yeah so i can see where a person if they are um, a hidden perv. They might fall into the wrong type of things, but I chose not to do those types of things. And how you about know? during the show? Uh, like if there's anything involved, like... Pursuing and changing. Mm, you know? Well, see, the head judge is always the one that decides whether or not uh, some scores are going to be kept in or some scores are going to be taken out, right? Um, they're also the ones that decide, I guess, a lot of the final decisions, you know? So if they have a way with a head judge, I mean, I could possibly see that happen. You know, um, there's been a lot of rumors where some competitors have slept with judges, you know, to get higher, uh, placings and stuff like that. I personally never partake in that because I wanted to be seen as a professional and not and 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 where other organizations would always be confident that I would be a proper judge that I'm not there trying to you know. But what my, my take is like, it, it does happen in all other organizations. Oh yes, it, it it's is. not like everybody always just wants to point a finger on APC. You know, it's, oh it's so political. It's just, yeah, no, so they're. All, I, I, I guess I'm trying to say. I mean, it does happen. They're all political when there's money involved. Um, that, that's what I was trying to get to. There's been you know? money offered. Two, I've been offered money to try to place even my own clients. Uh, I mean, I, if you're my client and you're and I'm judging the show and you don't look the part, I'm not going to place you higher than the other girl that obviously looks better than you. You know what I'm saying? I, and we talked about that in my yeah. podcast where I actually had two clients that did not bother to follow anything I told them, was too busy taking supplements that they never even tried from a supplement company because they wanted to be sponsored, you know, which ruined the whole prep. And then they had the audacity to think I was going to actually place them higher when their bodies look like crap because they didn't listen. They even bring their food for the show day because even that food is different yeah. when you're completely drying them out and then you're get, giving them the extra carbs to fill them out and stuff. Didn't bring none of that. 
And, and, and I, I, think that's where, I think that's where it's hard, too, because I've seen some organizations, you know, that have a judge, also a promoter, and also uh, a, a contest prep, like you saying. Yeah. So, usually, I mean, it shows, you know, favoritism in that sense. I, you know, I'm not saying you did it, yeah. but I'm saying it does show that. Yes. So, it, it, like I said, it, it does happen. You yes, know. and it happens so, with yeah. all the organizations. Um, I've even heard uh, rumors that some of the top uh, pros in WNBF uh, don't get tested. And I can believe that because some of them um, looked <laughs> way too dry, like I, way I, I, too dry. I was just talking with my other <laughs> guest, Joey, and I, I even talked to, you know, Frank, my ex uh -huh. I remember I told him one time, I go, dude, that guy ain't natural. Yeah, ain't there's... Natural. There, there's been some times I've been at the world championships and the, the the top looked way too dry, like dry, like if it was a pharmaceutical diuretic dry. And I've heard some rumors that the, some of those people, because they're on the bigger teams, uh, you know, paid off that they're not actually getting tested. And with those groups like the NFF, mm. we have to take a lie detector test. And then if we place, it's a piss test automatically. So I've been lie detector tested for nine years straight. And every time piss tests and all this stuff, this is homegrown for me. And it's because I never had a desire to do that. You know, I already have a very deep voice. If I mess around, man, I'll sound like a straight up guy, <laughs> you know, and I don't want that. You know, I just like to be muscular. So that's why I stayed with natural organizations. And plus, my mom took a lot of different things that some athletes take during her cancer treatments. So I know all the side effects that she went through and all that stuff. And I just... I just was like, that's not for me. That's not why I got into fitness. Um, I wanted to be able to promote the healthy aspect of it because of what I saw my mother go through dying of cancer. And, and my, my take in this is just, it's, it's your personal choice, mm -hmm. you know? But like I, I say, it's like, if you're going to be natural, you know, stay natural and compete a natural show. Don't be a natural competitor and go to a non-tested and then complain about the Placing because you know you're not going to place higher. It is what it is. Yeah. Or take certain stuff, clean out, and then do a tested show. Yeah, yeah. Show. Exactly. You know, like it, yes. It, it, you can false. You know. I mean, even even light taking light detector. That's not accurate. Mm -hmm. you know, no, it's not as accurate as it is. Uh, but I know. I know. Uh, we were just talking about because I used to be a big fan of Musumania. I remember Stan McQuay. Mm -hmm. You know, all those big names were, and years ago in the early two thousand. Mm -hmm. well, to me, that they look natural. Now you see the muscle media now. Yeah, no. You but... see them now, you're like, okay, that ain't natural. Man. That ain't <laughs> well, natural the thing about so. muscle mania is it's random. So you know, if you happen to look too good, uh, I guess it's kind of like a kind of like a kudos that you get tested because with them they were always testing me all the time, and I guess maybe it's because I was from this area too. So they were always the, the couple years I competed with them, they always tested me, but it's just random. So yeah, you just gotta come in. I, 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 tell, I tell people is if even the Olympics, the elite yeah. Olympics, they're doing the highest shit. testing, <laughs> and they can still falsify those tests. And I don't know if you saw the documentary, you know, on Netflix. I forgot the name of it. It's it's about the cyclists. Yeah, Armstrong. What are you yeah, doing? They're I mean, taking their blood it, in and out. Like if uh, like if they're um, how do you say when they do the thing when they the kidney it's, stuff. Uh, but I said that, it? but it's it's called, uh, blood blood doping. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, it is, but it just it you know it happens. That's what I'm saying. You yes. Know? But that's what I'm saying. Like you chose. Okay, I'm gonna stay natural. You know. Yeah. And and and, and get in that route. Yeah, because um I, also I suffer from adult acne. I as a child I had horrible acne since I was twelve. So I mean, there's some of the side effects of that, you know. And I know I would like turn into the ultimate pizza face and i don't want to go through those horrors <laughs> and i think because that's another thing too is that, that the side effects affect what you kind of already have exactly you know yes and so, so it enhances that you know if yeah. you have hair loss it's going to enhance your hair loss at yes. a faster rate you know? yeah yeah my acne has gotten better as an adult but man i remember those days that from 12 to like 15 i mean just that all down my back all on my face and where it was painful you know what i'm saying so I didn't want to relive that again, you know, and so I, I was completely fine staying natural and I've coached all different types, you know, I have, it's, and like you said, it's your personal choice. So when I've gotten people that wanted to do NPC shows, um, I'm just like, you know, all right, let's do it. You just got to follow these certain things, 
And just know that you're going to go going up a different type of category. It's not the same as natural shows if you're used to natural, you know. So, and then I coach people for natural shows. I coach regular athletes too um, for football, for cross country, basketball. When did you start like coaching? You know, like, like for uh, competitors. competitors. I was asked uh, in. I think it was 2013 um, by a friend of mine. She was getting into wanting to become a bikini competitor. Okay. And she asked me uh, if I would be her coach. And at that time, I didn't know anything about coaching bikini. Um, I only knew personal training. I'm not one of those people to lie to someone and tell them, oh, yeah, I could coach you or whatever. I'm like, if you could give me some time to study your category, um, I will coach you. But I don't want you to spend because she wanted personal training as a coaching, not like online or you just send them on an email, you know? So that's like a lot of money. So I'm like, okay, just give me some time, like three, four months to study this category and how to coach you. Um, because also she was very thin. Basically I had to build her out. You she needed to build some muscle tone. Yes. Cause she was just really skinny, like and cylinder, no, no waist, no nothing, you know? So after about four months, uh, I told her I was ready and we started a uh, personal training and we got her ready for the muscle mania in Dallas. Okay. And first time, uh, she got third place, top five, and she was recruited into a national team from that. And she went all the way to the top of muscle mania with coach there with Aaron Zambrano. I don't know if you know who he is. He's one of their famous coaches. So he got, she got recruited in his team. So when I first coached my first bikini girl, she got recruited by a national team. I was like, well, damn, I guess I'm pretty good at this. So that's what started there. I started coaching uh, bikini and figure girls. And then I got my first uh, men's physique, um, but it was actually a client that I was helping him fix his chest, which is on my other podcast uh, that I did before you uh, with uh, Terrence Wright. He was a fitness model up in Houston and he ripped his chest muscle off. And when they fixed his chest, uh, they really messed it up. I, I don't know if he went to a plastic surgeon or who this guy was, but he made his pec look like a breast instead of a pec. Yeah. So I helped him even out his chest stuff like that. And that's what started my whole coaching uh, men's physique. So it, it was just also just a gradual process. It wasn't something I just jumped in. Yeah. People asked me, I asked them if they give me some time to, you know, study it. And then that's how I started doing it, you know. And uh, do you have uh, some pros? Uh, yeah, I mean, I made myself into a two-card pro. I have a GBO pro uh, that I used to coach. Uh, bikini? Uh, bikini. Oh, yes, beach body, right? Beach, beach body. body. I think, uh, yeah, I think it is bikini called beach yeah, body. Beach body. Yeah. yeah, Elsa Feta's, that was okay. my first GBO pro. Um, once she got that, I mean, we split our ways and stuff, you know, how those things happen, you know. Um, but then after that was Paul Orfuela. He's an OCB pro. So I have those two and then my own pro cards that I got myself. Let, let, let's, let's talk about that. Like when you train somebody and you, mm -hmm. and you get them to that level mm -hmm. and then they leave you, well, what's your take on that? What's your feel of that? I mean, see, a lot of it has to do with egotism. A lot of them forget who helped them, you know? And then me being, uh, you know, I'm very sure of myself. I'm very confident of myself too. And if they try to talk down to me, I'm not going to tolerate that. You know, um, and that's usually where the split happens because, you know, um, I, I'm like, I hear, I helped you. You didn't do this by yourself. And if you think you can talk to me like that, you got another thing coming. I'm not, I, I can just go on by myself. So it's not like, uh, I mean, it, it sucks that you can't continue to work with people, but I think when it comes to competing, it could either be a good thing thing for the ego or it can completely go haywire where they completely forgot where they started from you know and they forget who helped them out and stuff is, is that a new generation thing you think because i i come old school yeah and i i was my was my coach all four years yeah you know? I, and i it's something about that stage where they already think they're models and it's like you're not even paid yet I've actually gotten paid to do commercials, you know, in Houston. They've flown me to Humble, Texas about three, four times to do commercials up there. I've come in magazines up there where they paid me. I went to the Arnold where I was paid as a model for a supplement company to debut their, their line. 
none of these people have ever got that opportunity and they're acting like they're supermodels and attitude and it's like you're not there yet you need to get there and burning your bridges you're never going to get there you know and that's i think that's a lot what they don't realize you can't be burning bridges like that because you need people to help you move up you can't do it all by yourself you know and i think i, I like i like what you said is that like a lot of it is like they forget who was there yeah when they, they were nobody. When they were nobody. When they were nobody, they were nobody their to, body looked like nothing. Yeah. You took them to nobody, a, you took them to a pro win. Nobody <laughs> believed them. You know, you were the one there where they were crying about, you know, their boyfriend or girlfriend or family not understanding. And but it happens. I mean, you just have to really love the sport. Like I really do love um the whole when the body starts changing because see i was in art before and the way i break down the person's body is the same way we would do paintings we would do it in shapes and then we would bring everything together so when the body starts reacting once the client starts listening that's the part that gets me like a high because i see everything coming together they didn't have a waist i'm making them tiny ways i'm seeing their glutes coming out I'm teaching them how to pose. They're finally getting the poses down. The muscles are starting to pump and flex right because they're making that brain muscle connection. Muscle connection. Yes, all, all that whole process, I absolutely love it. It's just once their ego switches, I'm just like, oh, is this going to be a good thing or this is going to be a bad thing? You know, because one of my best bikini girls that I had, which that one was really depressing. And a lot of the part, the problem was, she couldn't pose right. So she was always second. Like first in her category, but when it came to overall second, because she would pose like a Barbie, you know? And it's like, you can't pose like that. And I would always suggest people in her area, because she was way in North Texas, you know? Go to Dallas. There's these people that never wanted to go, never wanted to go. Well, what can I do to help yeah. you, man? If you're not even going, I mean, she would practice on her own. So... All these years, I, I have her first second, first second, first second. And then I don't know where they start thinking, oh, I already know what to do. I don't need them. And they start messing with the prep. Well, then she comes out bloated on stage. And then that's when they start confessing, oh, well, we took out this supplement and this supplement because we, we didn't think, you didn't think what? Look <laughs> at how this person came out. You messed it up. You know, you can't take those things. And then it's like, and then you don't even tell me. Yeah. You know? And then you're surprised that you looked at, like, that supplement is there for a reason. Like, you know, I mean, obviously you didn't even look it up to see why it's there, you know? I think that's one thing that if you're tr hiring a coach and you're truly hiring a coach and you can, you know, listen, you got to listen. Yeah, you know? I mean, it's it's fine that if you want to go on your own, it's just actually know what the hell you're doing, you well, know? I mean... At least study. Uh, uh, yes, no, you know, uh, because I, like I said, I, I kind of knew my stuff, but mm -hmm. when I hired my coach, I mean, my shit went out the window. Yeah. You know, I was going to just, whatever he told me, I did. Yeah. No matter what. You know, I didn't question it. I didn't know I said, if I'm paying for that service and his knowledge is there, his track work is there. Yeah. It's going to work. Listen. You know, it's going to work. Yeah, I'm, but, the, I'm the same, but I, I don't know. Maybe it is a new generation or the a new I think it's because also because it's we have social media now. So it's basically created that I generation and it's not an age generation. It's the selfish where I, I, I know I'm the one, I this, I that, you know, and that's when they thinking they know everything, you know, which they really don't, you know, I mean, you got to read the books and you got to know how to practice it. And you got like, I got tons of paperwork of research that I've done over the years. I've been doing this since 2010 when I became a personal trainer, you know, with regular weight loss clients, you know, even coaching like football, basketball, those type of athletes, when I'm strength training them during their off seasons and giving their diet, their diet is completely different than the competitor, depending on what we need for them to produce, you know? So, and those kids, they listen a hundred percent, the ones that are in regular sports, but I think it's since this is a one person type of competition, that's where the ego with competitors makes them think, oh, I know everything and stuff. And, and unfortunately, that girl, once she started listening to me on the last show that we worked together on, bam, I got her back to first place again in her category, again, second on the overalls, right? 
she dumped me as her coach, you know, went off with this other guy that I, I don't even know how this guy even convinced her that he could do what I do. I mean, I saw his own pictures. The guy looked like he's never been ripped in his life. I was like, I just couldn't believe what this woman was thinking and her mother, you know. And sure enough, yeah, all that beautiful muscle that I grew on her for several years. I don't know if you've ever witnessed that. Oh, yeah. It just looks like they got a erase her and erased all that beautiful hard muscle work. hard work those years and i'm just there like flabbergasted looking at this pictures like what is this person seeing and then posting oh my new coach is better than my old coach <laughs> how you're losing your shoulders you're losing your back muscles your butt has dropped how are you not seeing but then again it's the ego the ego has them blind yeah. like they're not seeing she went to this easy show. It's an organization called IPL. It's a smaller natural organization. Um, and I think it's uh, International Physiques League. Okay. That was a super easy show. That show, I got her first place. But then again, she didn't get the pro because her posing was off, right? So she was two points away from the posing to get her pro card. We won her category in that one. Um, she went back with that person to that show. She didn't even place. Oh, she didn't karma. even karma. <laughs> she didn't even place. And I'm like, just man, I was just watching like I, I think I think a lot of it is is as us coaches, as trainers, it's like you said, we're passionate about what we do. Yes. You know, it's we are artists, I guess like you're saying. Yeah. Because we we help create that physique. Yes. The client put the work. Yes. yes. They followed it. But if it wasn't for us. And the calculations. We didn't know that. Yes. When I got there. And designing know? a body isn't easy either. You got, like I said, that one lady that I that I got on a national team. She was very slim, no waist, just a cylinder. So I had to build her outwards, build her legs out, build her glutes out and arms, and then shave down with a little waist that I could make her to make her look fuller. So her... Her prep was like reverse instead of down. Dry. Yeah, because she was a skinny, so I had to build her yeah. outwards. So you got to know how to do that, you know, because everybody's different. And to get that X factor, that symmetry, you know, uh, like, I, like I said, with my own category, my legs were too big and my upper body was very small. So I had to build this outward and shave this down. Yeah. Now that I'm over here, retired those two pro cards and I'm dabbling with... Uh, the IFBB physiques and international wellness category. Now I can grow my legs, you know, and I'm lowering my upper body to fit into wellness. So that takes another totally different design. Different look, yeah, because yeah, I'm growing my glutes and all that other stuff. So that's totally different type of training, you know, and you have to know how to do that. And it's not the same workouts. Every even your own workouts change because yeah. your muscularity is different and all that stuff. So, and that's what they don't understand. It's not a cookie cutter thing. It's an ever evolving type. Well, of I think what happens with that, like you said, the cookie cutter is when you train somebody or coach somebody, and they don't have the knowledge of anything else, so they use yours mm -hmm. and then try to pass it on to somebody else. Yeah, use that, try to pass it on, and then they come. So yeah, I I, I, yeah. I told you. Did I tell you about that time when someone sold mine and they're like? Yeah. How come this didn't work? And I'm like, I, I, first off, who are you? Yeah. And, well, I bought your program from this such and such person. And how come it didn't work for me? Like, all mad. And I'm like, oh, well, first off, I'm not even supposed to tell you that because you didn't buy it from me ripping me off. And second, you need to ask that person that why does she sell you a program that was designed only for her and not for you? Like, you guys don't have the same body. So you need to go back. To her, because I don't owe you an explanation. Sorry, like they do they also need to, to, <laughs> to sell your product. Yeah, to somebody else, you know? and then mad that it didn't work. Like, <laughs> okay, give, give so, me an answer. <laughs> so, as as a coach, as a judge, and now your promoter, what advice you give these newcomers that that want to take that to the next level and actually compete? Well, what I would give uh, advice is just stay humble. And work hard. Um, you need people to in order to move up because um, you can't see yourself. You know what I'm saying? So you got to listen to the, what the judges are telling you. Not every judge is your enemy. So you got to listen to what they're telling you to work on. That's how I became a pro. That's how I got both of my pro cards. Because if I didn't listen to the judges, I also perfected my posing. Um, before there was even posing classes here, 
I was up in San Antonio, Austin, getting posed in classes by Dave Gooden, by uh, Terry, uh, by Miles Stovall. He's a three-time world champion with WNBF. I spent a lot of money to get my posing down. And I, once I perfected my back, I mean, that's, you know, the back wins any, everything, right? Learn how to be number one, to get number one. And that means number one, not only in your conditioning, but your posing, how you present yourself and your attitude. Because if you go in there with a crappy attitude and, and thinking you're number one and stuff, judges are going to see that. Other po coaches are going to see that. They're not going to work with you and you're over here prima donna and you're not even nobody yet for them to like. I mean, I, I get these people, these youngsters, oh, well, I got such and such followers on Instagram. And I'm like, and you still live with your parents. Like, what the? You're not like a business owner or anybody for me to be like, oh, yeah, let's work together. Because I was real big with the networking and marketing groups in McAllen like uh, HWNT, uh, NHPO, RGB, that's a National Hispanic Professional Organization of RGB. HWNT is a Hispanic, Hispanic Women's Networking Group of Texas. So these are a lot of business owners that we network and market together. You want to be get sponsored and all those things? The smartest thing is not to be giving everybody attitude. Why is anybody going to give you money and you're giving everybody attitude? And you haven't even done anything for the community. Like, I, I I crack up when I see these GoFundMe stuff. Oh, it's always been my dream and all this stuff. But why does those people need to fulfill your dream when you're not even doing anything to help the community? You know, I went out in the community and I organized 5Ks for five years. Casa of Hidalgo, I did a 5K for them. Uh, for uh, Good Samaritans, I organized 5Ks for them. Texas Oncology Foundation, uh, for several years, I organized 5Ks, three years with them, and I did their Zumba warm-up for their uh, annual run, bike, and walk that they have outside there. So I did a lot of community outreach and donated my time. That's how I got sponsored by local businesses and other people from when I went on to my shows and stuff. Um, having that attitude and acting like you're too good and talking, give me, give me, all, this, give me talking all this crap about people, how do you expect anybody to donate anything to you? You can't go in that with that type of attitude. And that's the stuff that really baffles me with some of these youngsters that they do stuff like that. And then they bite the hand that feeds them and stuff, you know, like there's a, it's a doggy dog world out there, you know, um, when you go out there, yeah, you think, oh, I'm this and this and that, man, those people out there will eat you alive. And if you ain't got backup down here and you get clobbered up there, I mean, then you're going to realize, oh, man, what did I do? And then when you come back here, hey, man, I'm sorry, <laughs> your, your bodybuilding card has been revoked, yeah. you know, because you already burned so many bridges down here that people are not going to want to work with you. You know, you, you have to be humble, keep doing your hard work, listen to the judges, if your coach has gotten you to a higher level and you look great every single time that the preps, if it ain't broke, why fix it? You know, yeah. uh, another company comes in, oh, we want to sponsor you supplements. You know, at the smartest time not to do it, not during your prep, because you don't know the side effects that those supplements are going to have. The best time to do that is when you're not on prep. When the prep is over, okay, go experiment with whatever you know, supplements from this store that you want, but not when a coach is trying to prep you because you don't know if those oh, things are going to work. Yeah. Yes, you don't know how things are going to work. And if your coach is already giving you stuff that works perfect, why mess it up? If it's not broke, why fix it? You know, uh, you, mm -hmm. you have to experiment with things first, but not during a prep, yeah. not during a prep. You know. So now the next big thing is you're promoting, right? Mm -hmm. so you're promoting a show down here. Yes. Second year. Second Tell year, Clash of the Border. Um, I've always wanted, when I, I started doing the 5Ks, it was really learning how to throw events, you know, to eventually have my own bodybuilding show. Because I do understand that eventually I'm going to get, like I am older now, you know, because when I started competing, I was 31. Now I'm 43. I still have a few years in me, but I don't know if I want to be that ripped and go through all that prep in the future. <laughs> so I'm solidifying myself in the business That's aspect good. of the show because I, I love the bodybuilding and all that stuff. Uh, so, and then also to give athletes down here a chance because I feel like there's not a, a lot of opportunities for people here in the RGB. Um, I had to go to San Antonio, Austin and compete all over the place in order to get the opportunities I got. 
And I'm just trying to offer that to uh, athletes that we have here because we do have a lot of potential, you know, um, another uh, different aspect for them to go just in case if it doesn't work out with them for the NPC, they could come with us, but there, anybody could go anywhere. So um, it's just really lo the love for the sport. And I, even though you might have some egotistical problems with some people, I still love helping people no matter what, you know, um, the whole prepping, putting the show on, seeing their happy faces, so, yeah, it's it's the second year. Um, we are sending them to Boca Raton, uh, Florida. This time last year, we, we took them over to Cutler Bay nearby in Miami at the Miami Grand Prix. This one is the Federation Championships. So we're the or only organization that is sending the athletes all expense trip paid to go and compete for their pro cards. So if I was you, I, I, I would do this. I mean, no other organization is going to pay your way. And how I was just talking about GoFundMe accounts, it is very expensive to compete, really expensive. And once you get into nationals and then your pro shows, it's even more expensive, you know, and you think you're going to have all these sponsors and all this. <laughs> it's you're going to be shocked that you really don't. You have to be way up there you know, the top five of the world to really get some of that. And those people are not even getting paid all their sponsorships. They get paid with stuff. It, it's, supplements. A little, it's a little different now. You know, it's not I, the same. It's not the same like you used they, to be. They get, they get, they're getting some money now. Cause I know what. No, no, no. About back then. I don't even yeah. remember back then, like matrix and they had like 10 athletes. They were paying six figure salaries. Oh man. Plus supplements. Plus, but yeah, now, now it's changed it's, a lot of that. Yeah. Too. Now it's, they, they, they run you like dogs, yeah. you know, and you yeah. don't realize it. You see a lot of these lights and glitter and stuff. Some of it's smoke and mirrors. So you have to be prepared to be able to afford those shows. Um, when I was in my pro shows, I started staying at Airbnbs to cut the, that money with, cause sometimes you're paying like $300 a night for a hotel. hotel yeah. Yeah, no, I go to Airbnb and rent a, a room in someone's house. And these people are super cool. You know, they've been vetted and stuff. And I've met actually clients going through Airbnb, renting someone's room. So I've had clients in New York City, in California, in Georgia, wherever I was competing. I always met some really cool people that I was staying with. So I cut my costs like that. I also started tanning myself to cut those types of costs because also I didn't like that burnt red oak look. I felt like a burnt piece of bacon <laughs> like, <laughs> like that. I didn't like it. So I started using my own stuff to cut costs. I also do my own makeup. So that's even expensive where sometimes they charge you 75 to $225 for makeup. And then what if you don't even like it? You know, so that's how you cut your costs because, yeah, I got sponsorships here and there um, from people in the Valley and stuff because I was the only one from the RGB competing in New York City and Massachusetts and stuff. But most of it's going to be funded by you unless you got a business and fitness like we do, like I have my gym. So for me, it was a write off for business. It's my marketing and stuff, yeah. you know, instead of paying for commercials or everything, people would look forward to see when I was competing or whatever. That's basically what my bodybuilding show is now. I think that's I think that's what we're exciting. Like you said, like you're if you do this show and you get you you get the whole ball, right? Mm -hmm. Overall, yes. They fly you out over to Florida to mm -hmm. compete for your pro card. Yes, you know? that's that's pretty cool. I mean, no, I like you said, no organization does something like that. Exactly, know? exactly. That's something exciting, you know. Yeah, and 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 I feel like if your coach is telling you not to do this, uh, ask your coach: Is he going to pay for you to go for your next show and your hotel and stuff? Like we are. I mean, don't let someone hinder your dreams. You know, uh, right now you're an amateur, so you could compete with anybody. Yeah. It's once you become a pro is when you sign your contract. Yeah, so sure. get your feet wet in any organization to see where you fit in, and if you find that organization that is catering to the athletes. Take advantage, you know, because a lot of us never got a chance to experience that. You know, I funded my own stuff. Uh, thank God for all the community work I've done. I've had businesses uh, sponsor me, local businesses and stuff like that. You know, but you got to get out there in the community. Uh, you got to be a nice person, <laughs> you know, so don't once, let that ego get to you, you know. So once again, when is it? Uh, it's June 25th, uh, 2022. So we still have ample time to register. Registration is going up. 
as we get closer to the show. So it'd be best to sign up as soon as possible. You know, so we're super excited. Uh, overall female is has a huge crown. Uh, we have the overall battle axe as well, too, for the male and female. Yeah. And what was pretty cool was is the president of the organization. Yeah, Wayne came Demilia down, right? came down. He was our head judge. Yes, yes. Uh, Art Belkway, which is he's real huge uh, in the old uh, promoting for IFBB. He was down here, too. Our head judge this time uh, might be someone from Canada. I'm, okay. I, I don't know yet. Um, right, I have to check my emails and stuff, but they're probably going to bring somebody big with an organization from wow. Canada to be our head judge this awesome. time. Awesome. So it's going to be cool. Look it up, clashattheborder.com, and take advantage. Yeah. If I if I wasn't, if this wasn't my show, I would be doing it, but it's my show. I can't compete in my own <laughs> And I can't judge my own show either. So, you know, the way people uh, win my show is honestly through the judges. You know, I can't judge my own show. I can't compete in my own show. All I can do is throw my own show. <laughs> So what else is in, is in the future for you? I mean, I, you said that you might or might not compete, you know? Yeah, well, I'm going to try to see if I could get my pro card in wellness uh, with the IFBB Elite Pros. Let's we'll see. But if that doesn't happen, I'm fine as long as I'm growing uh, the bodybuilding show. I just keep myself fit, you know, um, just do the same things I always do. I mean, I really enjoy uh, helping people uh, lose weight or get fit or as like my sp other sports uh, athletes. Uh, right now, I have a cross-country runner that's in uh, hitting state. Wow. Last year, we got her third place after an ankle injury, and I strengthened her back up. So I'm excited to see uh, that she gets higher than third this time. And she's the only one that lifts weights. Awesome. Yeah, because, you know, they have this idea that runners aren't supposed to lift weights. It's going to slow them down. Well, she ain't slow. She's a little tiny, five feet, and she whooping that butt out there <laughs> with all these taller girls being muscular. So it's that. I'm thinking about maybe in the future, maybe going into either uh, physical therapy okay. or maybe uh, as a clinical nutritionist. So that might be in the future, you know, besides having my job awesome. stuff. So, so uh Somebody wanted to get a real hold of you. Mm -hmm. How would they reach you? Um, you can call me at 956-483-3246. Uh, my name is Candace Michelle Fox. So you just type in that name. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Um, practically, I think all of them under Candace M. Fox because my, my name is not, it's pretty rare. So I'm able to have it there. Well, I appreciate you coming down. Is yes. there any last, last words you want to tell our people out there? Um, just do what you love. Uh, train smart. Uh, don't let people antagonize you into lifting more than what you're used to lifting because you can injure yourself. And they're not going to be the ones to help you after you get injured. Because being a bodybuilder, um, it's way different. Once you tear that muscle, you don't have your symmetry or anything like that. So train smart. Eat smart. If you have a coach that things have worked really well with them and stuff, just listen to the coach. Other people are always going to be trying to chime in. Let them talk to your coach. If that person was really that professional, they would talk to you and your coach about what they want to do with you. If you're going to experiment with new supplements, like I said, do it in your off season. Don't do it during your prep season, you know, um, and just, like I said, keep humble. You'll meet some such great people here that will want to help you out and help you reach your dreams. I've met so many people all along the Northeast coast and the West coast that are my friends till this day that we chat all the time that I met during bodybuilding. And the reason why, because I wasn't acting like I was too good for anybody. I've always just been a very cool, approachable person, yeah. you know, so. Yeah, and that's what I, that's the vibe I got from you when we met. You know, that was the first time we met. I know who you are. Yeah. But that was the first time we met, and now uh, it, was, it was very interesting. Cool, so, cool. Yeah, I always get that. They're like, yeah. I don't, you're not what I thought you were, <laughs> yeah. what I heard. Like, it happens. You know, usually when that happens, I end up meeting a person, and we become, like, really tight friends. Yeah. You know, so. Awesome. Well, I appreciate Candace making time to come out here for the meeting with us. So please share support, subscribe, give us a like on the video, put any comments or questions you'd like to ask candidates, you know, maybe we can do a follow-up video later, you know. Uh, so reach out uh, if you want to coaching, it's uh, coachjacemartinez.com. My team, Team Jack and IG. Follow us at Texas Bodybuilding News and IG and our YouTube channel. 
So stay healthy, get the last rep in. Till next time, peace.